Hello and welcome to the second English video. So you want to know how to learn real world English. Here's a short video in English. It's November 2020. Now when you're learning English a lot of people ask teachers how can I learn more vocabulary, how can I perform better in my everyday life and everyday work situations and it's true that a lot of the English we do at the business school and in the classroom and online is very traditional for example using papers, quizzes, multiple choice questions for the TOEIC, course books for business English or general grammar and these are all good starting points to learn the rules of the grammar and some general vocabulary and some professional vocabulary but in the end for your real life I think you can also learn a lot of English just by looking at real world websites and resources. So this technique of learning by doing is a kind of subconscious way. So in a way you're going to be improving your English, learning English, but you don't really know that you're learning English because you're doing something different and you're doing an everyday task, which is also quite a nice thing to do in this lockdown phase because a lot of us have got work and it's quite repetitive and we do the same things every day. Sometimes it's nice to escape from that and do other things we're interested in uh, and think and dream and make plans for our future. So a few examples could be connected with your hobbies and your interests. You may want to do some shopping, you may want to plan a trip, a holiday, uh, you may want to think about another activity you enjoy doing connected with films or sport or crafts and if you start doing this activity but doing this or planning this activity in English instead of in French then you may begin to notice English words and English expressions and it's said that in fact real learning when you learn something it's a question of noticing it's not because me I give you a piece of paper and I say learn this information it's not me to tell you to learn but when you do it yourself when you're doing your own activity your own choice and you see the same words, the same expressions, when you actually notice, that's when the learning really happens. So for this concept, there is a certain level of repetition to do things again and again. You need to be able to go back and to read and to read again and to be able to repeat. But it's also very important to have variety, not just to use the same website. So use Global Exam, use a book, but also mix it up and use different activities, different sites. There are a lot of questions about the best way to learn. And as I said before, repetition and variety means there isn't just one best way. Uh, it's a question of mixing the styles and the techniques. So when we're looking at technology and all the online e-learning platforms, applications versus traditional ways with books and pens and paper, the old fashioned ways that we used, um, I don't think really it is a question of versus, is it one or is it the other? It's a question of doing both technology and using traditional methods. So trying to get a balance between the two and having a variety. So during this tutorial I'm going to show you how to learn some real-world English using websites. You will need a computer or your smartphone 
Um, but I also recommend you actually use a notebook. You could get one that's got an A to Z index so that you can actually write words, expressions and vocabulary by each letter. And of course, some pens and pencils. And I hope you enjoy the techniques. Here are 10 steps to enrich your vocabulary. Step one is to select a topic or area of vocabulary that you want to improve. Start with something you genuinely like and are interested in before you try something more difficult, more challenging that you feel you have to learn. I've put examples of different categories at the end of this video and some links. So I'm going to use the example of transport and travel. Step two is to use the links. So you can use some of the ones I've suggested here or find some more yourself to look at the websites connected with this vocabulary or interest. I've selected five websites, so the ones for Bristol Airport, EasyJet, Kwomi, National Rail and Trail Finders. Before you start reading long articles and paragraphs, write a list of keywords. For example, the vocabulary in the menu or the main sections of the site. So on this website, Trail Finders, the key sections of the site are latest offers, destinations, holiday styles, travel services, brochures, contact us. There's also search, find my local travel centre, cruises, flights, family, honeymoons, etc, etc. Let's look at another example. So on the Quoni site, again, the main key words are destinations, holiday types, offers, hour difference, inspiration. Now, the majority of websites now always have mentions for legal reasons of cookies, so you'll have to accept some of these. Some of the websites, for example, EasyJet, if you search for easyjet.com, you may automatically land on the French version. So remember to change the language to English and do this work in English, of course. Step three is to now make the list of vocabulary you're finding on the websites and at this point you can use a notebook, perhaps um, a version that's got an A to Z index, or just copy and type the words into an Excel table. So these keywords, destinations, offers, difference, inspiration, put them into a list format. I recommend to begin with you put the singular version. So for example, if the website says destinations with an S, then just put the singular form to begin with in your list. If the website is very big, limit yourself to a maximum of 10 keywords per website. Some words like this one, no, are part of an example, a phrase on the website, no before you go. 
So put the basic verb here and make a list of expressions if you find one in a different column. So I'll just go back to another example to do the same thing. Latest offers, destinations, holiday styles. So I've already got offer, destination, latest, and style. Okay, if you think you already know the word, for example, you already know style, you don't need to add it. It's really just for the new vocabulary, the new words. You can also, the advantage with Excel is you can put the words into alphabetical order normally. So you can easily find the words later on if you're adding something else in. Now you can follow the same procedure for a second, a third, a fourth or a fifth website. Keep adding the vocabulary and phrases to your list. Step four, when you've looked at four or five or more websites, look at your list of keywords and do you understand what everything means? If you do, then you can find the translations into French. If you don't know what the meanings are, then use an online dictionary. So a good example to translate from English into French is wordreference.com. So we'll look for a few examples here. Well, this is an easy one. Destination is the same. Find is trouver. Flight is vol. So I'll add those if you want more of a challenge instead of looking in word reference you could also try a monolingual dictionary such as the Oxford dictionary and search for the words in English with the definition in English and other examples. When you've checked the translations or the definitions, can you say these words? Can you pronounce them correctly? If you're not sure of the pronunciation, you can look at another very good website called How Do You Say? Type in the word and then listen to the pronunciation. Brochure. Brochure. And repeat. Brochure. Manage. Manage. This website also gives words pronounced with a British accent and an American accent. Leisure, also American, leisure. Leisure, leisure. And in fact, for pronunciation, the Oxford Dictionary also provides a pronunciation tool where you'll see the British English pronunciation and then the American English version. Leisure. Leisure. 
and also so does word reference. So you've got three sources of inspiration for listening to the pronunciation. Finally, when you've tested your listening and speaking, look at this section, the word class. Do you know the grammatical category of the word? We'd say a booking, it's a noun. A brochure, a business, a car. Contact could be a contact, but it's also a verb to contact. So we could say uncontact in the translation or contacti. So check that you understand whether you've got a noun, a verb, an adjective. If you're not sure, again, you can find this information on the websites. Leisure, this word here, is a noun. Booking, again, is a noun. Gradually complete your word list with the translation and you can also look in English at the definition. Check your pronunciation and check the grammatical category, the word class of your list of words. Now the nice thing about this kind of English work is you can do a bit of exploring, you can look at holidays, clothes, food, sport, and learn some English on the way. Um, I'm going to pretend I'm going on holiday uh, because I think I'd really like to get out of Po. Um, and I'll do everything except pay for the holiday, of course. I'll see if I can go to Denmark, that would be nice. I'd like to go back to Copenhagen. Uh, when can I go? Oh, not before February, but I'll try for the 12th and come back on the 19th. I'll go with my partner. I'll check the flights. But when you're going through the website now, this is step five, begin to look at some of the other text. So begin to read some of the vocabulary and the expressions on the website. If you're reading the text and you see a piece of vocabulary or an expression, you could also add that expression to your list of vocabulary. So we've got the verb to travel, and here we've got the expression, if you are traveling from a designated risk area. We've also got an expression here that we can associate with the word flight. Within 72 hours, of the flight departure time. Of course, your phrases may contain some new vocabulary that you may need to check on word reference. This is an important job when you're using a dictionary. There are sometimes two or three possible translations. So make sure that you can see whether you're talking about a person, a place, a time before you make the translation. So this was a designated risk area. So we're talking about a place delimité. And step six is to take a break. Uh, don't spend hours and hours on this kind of 
list, spend about 20 to 30 minutes. It doesn't matter either if you can't find every single piece of vocabulary in a phrase. You might not find it on one website, you might find it on another website. So take a break after 30 minutes and come back and continue looking at your vocabulary list, developing it, adding to it, a bit later or on a different day. Step seven. Now look at your list again and go back to add details from one more website. I've chosen the Bristol Airport website. I didn't look at that one before. And some of the words now may be more familiar because I've seen them on the previous websites. Some of them may be totally new. Once again, look at the keywords in all the different sections. Sites. We've already seen the word destinations, offers, we've seen inspiration, but there's the verb here, inspire, which is from the same root. So just look again globally at one more website and add a few more words into your list. So I'm going to add inspire which is the verb we've seen. So step seven is to really reread your list, look at one more website and add a few extra words just to familiarize yourself with the range of vocabulary connected to the topic of, here the example is travel and transport. Step eight is to prepare a quiz. You can do this immediately or you can save it and then you'll be able to go back to it whenever you want to revise your travel vocabulary. So I'm just going to organize my list and move the translations next to the list of words in English. And then I'm going to use a website called Quizlet, quizlet.com. I've already got my own account, but you can create one for free. So create or log in to your account and create a new quiz. Give your quiz a title, I'm going to call mine Travel Vocabulary, and then simply upload from your Excel table, copy and paste the words and the translations and add them to Quizlet. So everything looks correct. I'll press import. If you want to delete a word, if you think in the end, oh, I don't think I'll use information, it's the same in French, I'll delete that one. So is inspiration. If you feel more confident already that you're learning more and more English and you don't need to have this full list, then just save the words that you think are the most difficult to learn and to memorize. When you're ready, click create. You can share the work between you. 
so one person is working on vocabulary for travel and transport at the same time as you, you could send them an email with your quiz and try and do the quiz that somebody else has made. Otherwise, what you can do basically is now to test yourself with all these different formats, flashcards, learn, write, spell, test, and there are a few little games, match or gravity. So the basic format here for the flashcards, if you click on the English word, you'll see the French word behind. Then go to the next one. So you can test your memory word by word. If you want, you can try another format. And so here, you've got the English written and you have to type in the French. Okay, you can also do matching questions. So this one will be and multiple choice questions. True or false, are these the correct definitions? And check your answers, was everything correct or not? So here I've got 50%. You can also do matching games, where now you put the words next to their translations and see how quickly you can complete the task. When you've put everything in Quizlet, then this will stay here for as long as you need to use it. And so you can search for your different quizzes, you can search for other people's quizzes that other people have made and which are free and you can keep testing yourself in the domain of the vocabulary that you want to revise. Okay, this is step nine. The biggest challenge is for the end. If you go back to one of the websites that you looked at initially, I'm going back to trailfinders.com and find a longer article or paragraph of text. So I'm going to select the destinations and try and find some information about Denmark, where I want to go. Now I've decided I'm going to read a longer paragraph not just look at words and phrases. If I select the text, I can use this website, which is the Oxford Text Checker, and I can analyze the text. To see how easy or difficult it is. The words are organized in different colors. A1 is the relatively easy elementary level and C1 is the harder advanced level. If I click on the results, it shows me that in this article, 65% of the words are relatively easy there's only one word which is considered to be very advanced. Uh, there are, however, quite a lot of words that are B2 level. There are nearly as many as there are in the A2 level. Double click on the word and then it will take you directly to the dictionary that we saw before. So again, you can have the definition in English, the other examples and the pronunciation.
stunning. Stunning. And you can go back. Do another example. Highways. Highway. Highway. Of course, you can still copy and add some of these words that are perhaps new and more difficult into your Excel table and go back and update that and develop it even more. So that's the Oxford text checker, which I recommend to do at the end of all these different steps to improve your vocabulary. And that's it. Step 10 is to stop again after another 30 minutes. You should have a longer and longer vocabulary list and more familiarity with the area of vocabulary you've chosen to revise. It's a good idea to go back and look again at this list after a week or two and then move on to something totally different. Thanks for watching this video. Here again are the lists of recommended websites you might want to explore for all the different vocabulary areas. And here are the websites I mentioned for pronunciation hajusay.com translating from english to french and french to english wordreference.com the english dictionary from oxford oxfordlearnersdictionaries.com and connected to the oxford dictionary is the oxford text checker Thank you. Bye-bye.